All right, guys, I'm just gonna be real with you. I've been a huge fan of Apple's higher-end iPads for years now because of different factors like the updated design, the feature set, and the performance. But now that it's been over half a year since Apple's budget iPad 9 has been released, I've realized that the 10.2-inch iPad accomplishes so much for so little, honestly packing enough features and performance for most people out there. So in this video, I'm gonna highlight all of the benefits with going with an iPad 9 instead of Apple's expensive iPad Air and Pro models, especially if you're budget conscious because you can actually save quite a lot more money than you think you can without sacrificing an excellent and reliable user experience, no matter if you just wanna use it casually on your couch or if you're actually trying to replace your laptop. And since nothing is perfect in this world, I'll also be covering the downsides that you absolutely must know if you're gonna be going with the budget iPad instead of one of the more expensive models. So be sure to stick through to the end of this video so you don't miss out on anything. Now, one of the main reasons people go for the more expensive iPads is the higher level of performance, and that's exactly what you get with the M1 chip in both the iPad Air and the Pro. But I've actually been shocked by how well the A13 chip in the iPad 9 performs. First of all, if you just look at the benchmarks, you'd expect there to be a noticeable difference in day-to-day -day use between the A13 chip and the M1 in the iPad Air. That's literally two to three times faster in terms of CPU and GPU performance. But in reality, you can hardly tell a difference while swiping through the home screen, using common apps, or browsing the web, which goes to show how impressive the A13 really is. But what shocked me the most was the gaming performance when I was getting a solid 60 FPS in a bunch of different games like Call of Duty Mobile, Pokemon Unite, and League of Legends Wild Rift, which is the exact performance I was getting on the M1 iPad Air, which means that all of the extra horsepower is going to waste. It even played the most demanding iPad game out there, Genshin Impact, at completely maxed out graphics settings, and it performed impressively well with minimal frame drops. And this to me is a big deal because the previous iPad 8 that came with the old A12 chip performed quite a bit worse. So this new iPad 9 is the first 10.2 inch budget model that totally kills it in terms of gaming performance. And of course, it's not perfect because it still uses the legacy design with the Touch ID home button on the front instead of a fully redesigned edge-to-edge -edge display like on the more expensive iPads. But for $310 right now on Amazon, you simply can't beat the value that you're getting because it finally packs a few very important changes that Apple has been holding off on for years. First of all, the budget iPad has come with only 32 gigs of storage ever since the fifth generation iPad that was released in 2017 for $329, but now Apple has finally doubled the storage for the same $329, which is actually incredible if you consider inflation spiking over the past five years. Not only that, but the budget iPad has come with a 1.2 megapixel selfie camera ever since the iPad 4 was released in 2012. So for the first time in literally a decade, Apple has upgraded the selfie camera to a new 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with 10 times the megapixels. And yes, it's exactly the same selfie camera that comes on Apple's most expensive iPad Pro. So based on those three changes, the snappy A13 chip, the doubling of storage, and the new selfie camera, I'd say that this is the best update the budget iPad has ever seen in terms of value, and I'm actually shocked that Apple kept the price unchanged with all of this value added to it. And that's actually not the only difference because with this year's iPad 9, Apple upgraded the display to support True Tone, which I absolutely love and use on all of my Apple products, including my iPhone and my MacBook Pro, and they also improved the video camera quality, allowing extended dynamic range, as well as 1080p recording at up to 60 FPS. But getting back to the main point of this video, the most important reason why it makes sense to go for the budget iPad 9 compared to the iPad Air and the Pro is that you not only save a huge amount of money up front on the iPad purchase itself, but you also continue to save more cash as you purchase more accessories. 
For example, if you want an Apple Pencil with the iPad Air or the Pro, you can only buy the second gen Apple Pencil, which costs a whopping $129. But with the budget iPad 9, you have the option of buying the Logitech Crayon with full stylus support for only $50 right now on Amazon, which is a massive savings of 79 bucks. But going even further, one of the main reasons why people buy the more expensive iPad Air and Pro is because they come with support for those awesome keyboard cases with built-in trackpads like Apple's Magic Keyboard case for a huge $300 or the less expensive alternative, the Logitech Folio Touch, which also has full trackpad support and a full row of function keys for basically $145 to $155. Bucks. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can get basically the same thing on the iPad 9 since it also comes with the smart connector, but the Logitech Combo Touch is actually even less expensive and it comes with an Apple Pencil holder so you don't lose it. And as far as the usability and experience, it's excellent with zero latency and it supports all of Apple's trackpad gestures and keyboard shortcuts since Logitech is the only third-party company that has full access to Apple's smart connector and custom APIs. But the main point I wanna make is that if you want a full iPad setup with a pencil and a trackpad keyboard case included, you're only spending $503 with the budget iPad 9 if you use the Amazon links in the pinned comment below instead of $834 for the iPad Air and a massive $1,033 for the iPad Pro, more than twice the price as the iPad 9 setup. So for $503, you've got a capable iPad that you can do basically anything you want with, from general web browsing, watching YouTube or streaming movies and shows, playing some of the best games at a solid 60 FPS, sketching or taking notes with a pencil, and of course, using it like a laptop with full trackpad support for small business work or anything else. But of course, it still has its problems that you need to be aware of if you're gonna be buying this setup like the display glass being non-laminated, so it isn't nearly as high quality as the other iPads. It of course has the old design with the home button and square display, which doesn't look as good. The specs are somewhat outdated compared to the others, like the older Bluetooth spec, and it has the older chip. And finally, it still comes with a lightning port compared to the other iPads, which all come with USB-C. But if you can look past those few things and you just need a basic iPad for a great price, I think that this one is by far the best bang for the buck and it gets a lot more accomplished than many people expect. So hopefully you enjoyed this review and if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and definitely check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.